These are the top seven apps that I use to grow and manage my Apple smart home that has over 50 smart devices. Now, growing and managing your smart home can be overwhelming, especially if you have a lot of smart home devices. Thankfully, these seven apps can make managing all these smart devices much easier. I'll explain why and why I would recommend using multiple apps for your smart home later on in the video. The first step on this list is Fing who is sponsoring today's video. I have been using Fang long before they were sponsoring me and it's a great app to manage devices that are on your network. Fang allows you to see all the devices connected to your internet at any time, monitor your internet speed, and offers various ways to manage these devices. I use Fing to keep an eye on all the devices on my network and I can easily see all the data about a device, including the type of device, the brand, and the IP address, and I can even block any device that I do not recognize, which is helpful as I'm adding more devices to my smart home. Plus, I can receive an alert when a new device has joined my network or when a device goes offline that I need to be notified about, like if one of my HomeKit hubs goes down. With the vulnerability check tool, you can see any network vulnerabilities your router may have, such as open ports that can lead to hackers trying to access your network. Most of the features Fing has are free, including network scanning and monitoring your network speed. But for full monitoring and protection for all of your devices, there is a premium version available that gives you access to network alerts, viewing hidden cameras on your network, and router checks. Fing works on iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows. And by using my link down in the description below, you can get a 25% discount for six months off their monthly premium plan. And a huge thank you to Fing for sponsoring today's video. The next app that I use to grow and manage my Apple smart home is the Apple Home app. It's the default free Apple by Apple that will allow you to set up and view all your smart devices that work with HomeKit all in one app. It's a basic, very easy to use app to control your devices, view your cameras, run scenes, create automations, and manage basic settings for each of your devices. It's available for all iOS devices, including the iPhone, the iPad, the Apple Watch, and the Mac. I like using the Home app on the Mac to quickly control devices and run scenes without having to get at my phone or to tell Siri to turn a light on or off. You can just use the Apple Home app to grow and manage all your smart home devices, but the Apple Home app does not give you access to all the features that a smart device may have, and you'll need additional apps to to access these features. Plus, there are some issues with using the Apple Home app exclusively. This brings us to third-party apps for HomeKit, which are apps made by other developers that give you access to all the features of a smart device, including features you will not find in the Apple Home app that could be useful to you. These apps help solve a lot of the problems that you may experience if you just use the Apple Home app. One of the first things that you'll notice about the Apple Home app is the background wallpaper looks the same across all of your rooms. If you have a lot of rooms, then it can be difficult to know which room you're in since they can all look the same. You are able to change the wallpaper from a few different pre-made options or choose a photo from your photo library, but I wish you could really personalize the wallpaper for each room. And that's where the app Home Paper comes into play, created by Aaron Pierce. Aaron Pierce is an indie app developer that makes other apps for HomeKit that I'm a huge fan of. In fact, we'll be looking at more of his apps later on in the video. HomePaper allows you to add your own photo as a wallpaper and fully customize and personalize the color background and the design layout. There's a ton of pre-made gradients that you can choose from, the style of gradient from radial to curved, and adjust the sizing, or you can create your own two-tone gradient design from the color palette here. Once you're done, you export the image, then choose your room in the Apple Home app and add the new wallpaper and it will give the room a bit more style. Unfortunately, Apple does not allow wallpapers to sync across multiple iOS devices. So if you create a wallpaper in a room on an iPad, then it will not sync to the same room on an iPhone. You will have to manually create a wallpaper for each room on each device one by one. I've made a couple wallpapers for different rooms with an image of what the room is, and it really makes the home app pop with a bit more personality and makes managing multiple rooms much easier. The home paper app is free to download for iPhone and iPad and allows one export for free. It's 99 cents for unlimited exports which is a bargain for how valuable this app is. Speaking of valuable, this next app has saved me so much time, frustration, and most importantly, money. So whenever you buy a new HomeKit device, the device comes with a setup code, which is an eight digit code or QR code that you'll scan when adding a new device in the Apple Home app. This code contains all the information about the device, 
like what type of device it is and the features that it has. If you ever need to reset a smart home device, so like if it's not responding or not working right, you will need this setup code to get the device back into the Apple Home app. And without this code, it's nearly impossible to get a device back into the Apple Home app since neither Apple nor the manufacturer of the device stores these codes for privacy reasons. And oftentimes, you just have to buy a new device if you cannot find the setup code. That's where the app HomePass comes into play, also created by Aaron Pierce. HomePass makes it easy to manage all the setup codes by digitally storing them in one app instead of physically having to keep track of them on paper or a label, which can easily get lost or scratched off. Since the Apple Home app does not store these codes, if you do have devices already set up in the Home app, you will have to find and scan the setup code of each device to get the device into the HomePass app. This code could physically be somewhere on a device itself, inside the box, or inside the manufacturer's app of the device. Once you find the setup code, just tap the plus button and choose add existing accessory. Here you can see all of your accessories that are not connected to a bridge. And when you choose one, then it will automatically fill in the info from the home app, like the brand, the room, and the category. Just scan the setup code and now the code will be stored for safekeeping. If it's a new device you don't have set up, you'll have to fill in all of the information manually. So I'd recommend adding the device to the home app first, then backing up the code to the HomePass app. If a device is connected to a hub, you're only able to save the setup code of the bridge or the hub since the devices connected to the hub do not have a setup code. This includes devices from Philips Hue and Acara. The setup codes are synced to iCloud as a backup and can be exported as a PDF or a CSV. So now, if you need to reset or re-add a device, then you can just add the device via the setup code or use the HomePass app on an Apple Watch and scan the setup code from there, which is awesome. Whenever I buy a new smart home device, I save the setup code in case I ever need to reset the device. HomePass is especially helpful as you grow and expand your smart home. It helps you keep track of your codes in case you ever need to reset a device. HomePass is only $2.99 and it's a one-time universal purchase that works on the iPad, the Mac, and the iPhone. And it's an app that I would highly recommend if you're wanting to grow and build up your smart home. The next step on this list is home devices, which is easily by far one of my favorite apps of all time. If you're thinking about buying a smart home device that works with Apple Home, one of the first questions that you probably have is, what can this device do in the Apple Home app? Well, the Home Devices app shows you all the features that a smart device has in the Apple Home app and more before you actually buy the device. This way you can know if a device has the features that you are looking for. Home Devices is a reference guide for your current HomeKit devices or for devices you'd like to buy in the future. I will often use this app to see what a specific device does before I buy it, or I'll just browse the app to see all the different types of HomeKit devices and what they can do. Now this app will only show native HomeKit devices. If the device is not native to HomeKit and requires a third-party bridge like Hoobs or HomeBridge, then the device will not show up in this app. The devices in the app are organized by category type. There's categories for all device types, like cameras, lights, sensors, a section for devices that support matter. You can also enable or disable specific filters. So for example, like a camera. You can see if the camera supports HomeKit secure video, has two-way talk, and how the camera will appear in the Home app. The app will also show you what automations that you can create with this device, conditions that can be used, deeper technical details about the device, what app you need to use this device, who the brand is, and view other devices that the brand makes, and if the device requires a bridge, and what the bridge is. And another example is a security system. This will show all the native HomeKit compatible devices that have a security system exposed and how they will appear in the Apple Home app. Now these controls are not active, just a demo. There are also some additional features to this app as well, like being able to see articles about specific smart home topics, the latest devices to support HomeKit, a list of all your devices in your smart home and all the features that they have, news stories from other great HomeKit YouTubers and HomeKit blogs, and receive a notification when they post which I found helpful to stay up to date on the latest HomeKit news. Home Devices works on the iPad and the iPhone and is free to use, but there is a paid plan available that will unlock all of the features of this app. When it comes to HomeKit smart cameras, the Apple Home app only shows you a snapshot of your cameras from moments ago, and you can only view a live feed of one of your cameras at one time. But what if you wanted to view the live feed of all of your cameras at once? Well, that's where the app HomeCam comes into play also created by Aaron Pierce. HomeCam will show you a live feed of all of your cameras at one time. 
And this app works with native HomeKit cameras and cameras that using a third-party bridge like Hoobs, HomeBridge, or the Starling Hub. You can customize which cameras appear and which cameras don't appear and what order they appear in as well. When you're viewing the live feed, you have access to any additional features a camera may have, including to a talk, a speaker, the brand, and if it's a battery-powered camera, it will show the battery level. There is also the ability to view and control other HomeKit devices in the same room. This includes lights, smart plugs, a security system, and even the ability to run scenes. Now, my favorite part about the HomeCam app is that it supports Siri shortcuts. So I have a shortcut on my Today View on my phone that asks me what camera that I want to view, then displays a live feed of that camera, or I can choose to view all the cameras and the HomeCam app will open and show me all my cameras. This shortcut is great for quickly viewing your cameras at a glance without having to go into the Home app and choosing the camera you want to view. HomeCam is $4.99 and works on the iPhone, the iPad, and the Mac. And it's a great app for managing multiple cameras. The last app on this list is Siri Shortcuts, a free app by Apple that allows you to run multiple actions with just one tap. I use Siri Shortcuts as a quick way to manage the status of an Akara contact sensor that I have on my back gate. This sensor tells me if my back gate is open or closed so I can know if it's safe to let my dogs Teddy and Daisy out to use the bathroom. I can manually check the status using a Siri shortcut on a widget on my home screen, but sometimes I forget to check if the gate is open or closed before I let my dogs out. So this shortcut automatically runs at 6.30 in the morning and tells me the status of the back gate and if it's safe to let the dogs out or not. Siri Shortcuts is free for iOS devices and works on the Mac as well. Those are some of the apps that I use to manage and grow my Apple Smart Home. There's a bunch more apps available on the market today that can also help you grow and manage your Apple Smart Home, and I will leave more of them down in the description below. Let me know what apps that you guys use in your HomeKit Smart Home down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see y'all in the next one.